When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me, and since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. I honestly believe that if you're, if you're focused and passionate and driven, um, you can achieve anything you want to achieve in life. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. And ladies and gentlemen, I started working on my dream. And most people don't work on their dreams. Why? For many years, I didn't. One is because of fear. The fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? The other thing is that most people, ladies and gentlemen, they get comfortable. They stop growing. They stop working on themselves. They stop stretching. They stop pushing themselves. And they end up becoming very cynical about life. And they throw in the towel on themselves and on their families and on their dreams. The limitations exist only in our minds and if you start using imagination then your, your possibilities become limitless. If you're passionate and driven and focused in what you do, if you're really good at it, people will take notice. That's basically it. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out, working on my dream. And I want you to think about whatever your dream is. Because I was willing to take a chance, and most people won't do that. Most of the people that you talk to to try and bring them into the business, these are not risk takers. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you, that in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. a redemptive power that making a choice has, you know, rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening. Make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide.
The most important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. The thing I really want to emphasize is I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. When you have a dream and the dream isn't something you dream and then it happens, the dream is something you never knew was going to come into your life. Dreams always come from behind you, not, not right between your eyes. It sneaks up on you. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face this is who you are. This is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers. It never shouts. Very hard to hear. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear. It very rarely shouts. And if you can listen to the whisper, and if it's, it tickles your heart and it's something you think you want to do for the rest of your life, then that is going to be what you do for the rest of your life. And we will benefit from everything you do. Thank you very much. Young people understand this young man made 10, 15, 20 short films before he got the opportunity to make Moonlight. So never give up without commitment. You'll never start, but more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it was easy, there'd be no Kerry Washington. If it was easy, there'd be no Taraji Henson. If it were easy, there'd be no Octavia Spencer. But not only that, if it were easy, there'd be no Viola Davis. If it were easy, there'd be no Michael T. Williamson, no Stephen McKinley Henderson, no Russell Hornsby, if it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So, keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. I think one of my greatest inspirations or, or, or things that I would feed off of basically was just obviously people not believing in the, you know, the cloud of doubt that kind of, I felt hung over my head and wanted to just prove everybody wrong, you know what I mean? I wanted to make it, and I was gonna make it regardless of what anybody said. First of all, you have to make sure that this thing is for you, and it's who you are, and you're built for this, you know? And then you have to give it the passion that's necessary, you know? Like I said, I don't do it for the money. The money's gonna come. I do it because of the love that I have for it, you know what I'm saying? If I was a plumber or something like that, I still would make hip-hop records. That's how much love I have for it, you know? I feel like right now, I've been in the game close to 27 years, and I've actually thought about this just recently. Out of the entire 27, my 27 year career, there's only been two weeks that I've been out of the studio. Mm. I've never been out of the studio longer than two weeks in my entire career. That's how much love I have for this thing that I do. So that's the thing, just the passion that you have for it and really, really put your all into it and make sure that your word is the last word. That way you don't, you know, you don't play the blame game or anything like that. If it comes out hot, it's on you. If it doesn't come out hot, it's on you. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is to it. What you gonna do? You gonna find something that you love to do and have a passion for it, or you gonna stay, you know, mingling in the streets until something major happens? So the moment I defined myself and freed myself was the time I locked myself in the studio and said, you need to do music. Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. 
So I turned 25, 10 years later. That same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. No, no, no. She said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero's always 10 years away. I'm never gonna be my hero. I'm not gonna attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream. It's very important as you hold on to that dream, there are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. The people that are running after their dream know they're going to have hard times. They keep on running because they're saying within themselves, I'm the one, I'm the one. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. The people that are running after their dreams are the people that are hungry. If you want to make your dream become reality, the people that are running at their dreams know that it's possible that you can live your dream, that it's necessary, that you're relentless, that you have a plan of action, that you are creative. The people that are living their dream are finding winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dreams are the people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. And they're resolving within themselves, it's not over until I win. But not only is it important that you believe and begin to know that it's possible for you to live your dream as you run toward it, but I've done something that I want to share with you called Choosing Your Future. In fact, I've developed a set of tapes talking about how to begin to create your own reality by choosing your future. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life. People who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry, people who are unstoppable and unreasonable, people who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. I love this one. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed, but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. You gotta take a shot. You have to live at the edge of your capabilities. You gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail. That's the reason for practice. Practice is controlled failure. You're getting to your limit, getting to your limit, getting to your limit. You can't lift that, you can't do that, you, until you get to the point that all of a sudden, your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it. Failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. Why do you want to be a champion? Or what do you want to accomplish? Why are you training? And they will, if, you, if a guy would get up and he would say, well, I want to train because I think that if I get muscular and um, you know, I feel like I'm getting the kind of definition 
and then maybe can enter a bodybuilding competition. I said, sit down. Because if you think this way, you're going to be a loser. You're never going to make it because there's no maybe. You've got to get up and say, I want to be a champion. Ain't nobody going to get in shape until you go to the gym and do the work. Everybody want money, but you ain't doing shit to go get it. Everybody want a better life for their career and their family, but you ain't doing nothing to go go get it. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say, you can count on me and they don't come through. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. You ain't gonna believe this. Well, you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up and say to your mother, this kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. Greatness is not this uh, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, God-like feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself. Until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. I love living. I think that's infectious. It's something that you can't fake.
God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life. I want my life, I want my, my work, uh, my, my family, I want it to mean something. And it's like, it has, if, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. So let me tell you, as you prepare to go off into the world, remember those six rules. Trust yourself, break some rules, don't be afraid to fail, ignore the naysayers, work like hell, and give something back. I want the world to be better because I was here.